yeah, I switched to be much more plant focused and, and feel the benefits and see the benefits of my blood work, which I do fairly regularly. Uh, but it's taking supplements, even though we've shown in animals and others have shown in people that can mimic exercise, can mimic fasting. Uh, this It's not an excuse to sit on the couch and just pop pills. We've met people that eat terrible diets and take a supplement thinking that that will replace a healthy diet. And that's not true. What we sh have shown in my lab and others, many others have shown is that you need to do both to get the biggest bang for the buck. And you can't just expect supplements to replace a healthy diet. And I also saw a question, uh, what about the carnivore diet? We, I talk a lot about this. Um, the summary is that, you know, there's a big debate. There's the carnivores and then there's the, the vegans and they're seemingly opposed. Now, in the, in the short run, both have been shown to have benefits. But the question is, what about long-term health? And there the science speaks volumes. I'd love for a carnivore diet to be associated with long life. I wish that were true because I, I love meat. Just not the case. You know, speaking as a scientist, if you look at people who eat certain diets, the people that live longest are those that don't eat a lot, don't eat three big meals a day, they eat less than that. And they are mostly plant-focused. They don't eat meat all the time, especially processed meat. We know that, of course, that is the worst. But even large amounts of meat, what happens uh, is that you you can be in two different states. There's the abundance state or the adversity state. The adversity state is when the body thinks, wow, times are tough. I could starve. I could get into trouble. I need to run away from a saber-toothed tiger. We also call this hormesis, if anyone's listened to us before. Hormesis is what doesn't kill you, makes you live longer. And both diets will, will have an impact either on one or the other. Of course, the carnivore diet uh, is the abundant state. There's lots of amino acids, build muscle, uh, grow, uh, heal uh, wounds. That's what that state is. And, and it'll actually be very good in the short run. There's really no question you will build up muscle uh, probably you know, slightly faster, certainly uh, more fast than if you're only on plant-based. But the problem is that if you stay with that for decades, uh, the science says that it's not going to be as healthy in the long run as being on a plant-based diet. Now, you can have a really nutritious um, plant-based diet that will be as good as the meat-based diet for for physical and mental capabilities, but in the long run, we'll be turning on these defense pathways that in large part are controlled by mTOR, which stands for mammalian target of rapamycin. So we get to this drug, rapamycin. Rapamycin is a drug that was discovered on the island, Easter Island, Rapa Nui, and hence the Rapa name. And it's used in high doses to turn down the immune system so it doesn't, the body doesn't reject organs. But it was also shown to inhibit this mTOR enzyme that senses amino acids and meat consumption, particularly leucine and serine. These are abundant in meat, not so much available in plants. So the, the, the summary is that if you eat a lot of meat, your mTOR um, defenses will not be as active against aging as if you're on a plant-based diet. But you can mimic a plant-based diet and fasting by taking rapamycin, the drug, but not in high doses. Of course, you don't want to downregulate your immune system, but just inhibit it a little bit so that it's as though you're not eating a lot of meat. And then you'll turn on this autophagy, recycling proteins. That's very good for health. Um, but you should know you can't just go out and buy rapamycin. You do need to talk to your doctor. It's, it's actually not that easy to get. Um, so that's why I typically just skip meals. It has a very similar effect.